Hi, welcome to Gartner's IT Infrastructure Operations and Cloud Strategy Conference. Today, we'll be, we're going to be talking about how Accenture powers automation through observability and stack states 4T data model. And with me today, helping to present is Kaushik, and I'm Luke Higgins. Hello, all. I'm Kaushik. I've been with Accenture for the last 18 years. And at Accenture, I lead the architecture and engineering of all of our platforms, which includes my wizard, which is well, which we will talk about in quite a bit of detail. I also lead our automation capability, agile and DevOps at the advanced technology centers in India. In my role, I get to work with some of our uh, you know, key clients on doing transformative automation across development, testing, uh, their uh, uh, application and infrastructure management, etc. And I'm a master technical architect, master data architect, and an automation architect, and look forward to talking to you. Thanks, Kaushik. Uh, I'm a managing director at Accenture uh, for growth markets and work within the automation and assets team. Uh, over the last five years, uh, we've been really focused on building out our AIOps uh, practice and also our AIOps platform, which lives within my wizard. I've been at Accenture for 17 years and, and also I'm a master technical architect and, and really have, over the last five years had a very strong focus on enabling AI ops, analytics and automation to work together uh, in order to power out the digital enterprise. And we've been scaling our platform into hundreds of global clients and really enabling uh, the AI ops to de deliver a huge amount of value across uh, those clients uh, in different multi-regional cloud platforms. Today, we'll be talking through an introduction to my wizard, which Kaushik will be covering, uh, and then he'll go through the latest automation trends that we're seeing within the enterprise. He'll then pass it off to me where I can talk a little bit more about our value-led operations approach. And then I'll go through the 4T data model within Stack State and its significance and its capability that's really helping us to deliver differentiating value. And then finally, we'll wrap things up with our, the results of what we're seeing um, by leveraging it and and how it's powering our automation through observability and how Stack State's contributing through its 4T data model to deliver that capability. So let me start by introducing the MyWizard platform. At Accenture, we provide systems integration, application and infrastructure management services to over 2000 clients. And intelligent automation is an essential part of how we provide our services to each of these clients. And that's where MyWizard comes in. So MyWizard is the automation platform that we use in Accenture for all of the services we provide. And when I talk about automation, it's in a holistic sense. This is about how we bring in a combination of analytics, AI, scripted automation, bots, et cetera, to improve efficiency overall. The platform itself is architected in a way that it is modular plug and play so that it provides a lot of flexibility. At the same time, the, the, the platform helps us implement automation at a scale. So as we work across all of these clients, and especially in the last two years, these are some of the trends that we are actually observing. Firstly, every client looks for automation outcomes at scale, which means it's no longer sufficient just to implement auto automation in specific applications or a specific set of use cases but the outcomes need to be at an overall organization level. We are talking 40, 50, 60% productivity improvement, and these need to cut across service lines. Secondly, the entire discussion on automation is moving from productivity and efficiency based. They are still very much important, of course, but it is becoming more of a value-led discussion. For example, are we actually helping you doing automation in a way that improves the number of, say, credit card applications in a bank? Does it improve loan processing? Does it improve order fulfillment? And in doing so, how does it help our, uh, our clients grow and meet, uh, meet their strategic priorities? The third key theme, and this is especially in recent times, is automate to transform, which is the focus is no longer on automation in, uh, uh, on how we do uh, management of our applications, infrastructure and business processes. It is also about how we help our clients do a transformative change. So the way we automate should, one, accelerate the way in which we change, which means we do our releases faster, implement process changes faster, and so on. So we need specific automation assets and capability around this. 
but equally importantly the way we automate applications and infrastructure needs to aid the change and not come in the way in recent times especially after the pandemic there is a lot of focus on automation in the new normal which means much higher focus on system resiliency around critical processes making sure our applications and processes are, are much more resilient and also automation that helps us in virtual ways of working and finally a trend that is emerging and which we expect to continue over the next few years is there is a lot of convergence between what we traditionally call automation engineering practices and low code and all of these are coming together in the same automation solution where we are you know seeing more and more examples where they are all brought together to do automation in a way that will scale and stay future proof so what do all of these mean when you apply this in an operations world around applications and infrastructure management so here is where you know to do value led automation tying to all of these themes we saw a very good opportunity in bringing in some of the best capabilities of my wizard the strong suite of automation we have around monitoring auto resolution of tickets tasks etc the plug and play architecture which brings in flexibility to add different use cases products and adapt to the client systems and the ability to scale at an enterprise level so bringing all of this together with one of the very interesting products we've seen which is stack state and the 4t model which we'll talk about in detail which is tying all of this together with topology time tracing telemetry and traces to have a much more impactful solution that caters to all of these needs and how do we do this luke will take you through the details thanks gashi i wanted to first talk a little bit about our value led operations through my wizard and and how we combine it with stack state and what we're seeing is is being critical uh, in enabling that value led operations is the creation of the system general intelligence and what that really means is uh understanding and building a system from the, our cloud based discovery which we are, we are getting inputs from stack state to be able to do that automatic discovery for us but then starting to merge in other topologies that we can get from other sources and to bring it together into a master topology and I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit later on but really driving the alignment to the digital business uh, aligned topology as well so that we can understand with a focus top down on those business services what are the underlying IT dependencies we need this because this is what is enabling us to be able to make the right automation decisions and ensure that we're automating you know the right root cause problem uh and also then subsequently understand what the children of those problems are so that we can then subsequently order automate them in the correct order um and as we approach the resolution through our automated workflows that Kashik spoke about we're also using that system general intelligence to understand what business awareness we have as well so we can actually start to measure uh exactly what contribution every service is making uh and we can observe that and under understand that uh in the combination with the system general intelligence and then overlay ai to start making you know the right decisions based on that understanding of the business awareness and the fourth key area is building to operate and this is where we find quite a lot of use in stack state because it gives us the ability to constantly track what's happening in our constantly changing environments particularly now the cloud is is evolving so quickly and we're continuously delivering into those environments we need to infuse the operations culture in the way that we deliver the software so we can harvest and maintain that ip as we deliver the software but also it improves the efficiency of the way we deliver that software as well and finally having that observability uh in combination with the topology gives us that resilience and also an awareness uh around security to to ensure that we exactly understand what the fingerprint of our environment is and there are no other uh entities that we we don't understand in that environment and when we see see things that are performing in an anomalous way um through that system intelligence that we can't resolve with automation then uh then we then as uh, escalating to workflow management uh which which Kashik spoke about that's built through that low code approach and that's how we're delivering our value led operations. So let me introduce you to the 4T data model that we really rely on with Stack State. The 4Ts as was spoken about a little bit earlier represent four key dimensions that I think are game changing to have together. The first is topology which I spoke about and how we bind and create that master topology which I'll I'll also kind of walk you through the uh, the steps of how we do that. The second is 
the, the awareness of time and the capture of this topology state um, at every slice of time. Uh, and this gives us the ability to go back in time. So when we're in these changing environments, we can actually go back to uh, the point in time that those changes occurred within the topology and understand the exact state of the topology, which is extremely important when it comes to troubleshooting and when it comes to our automation needing to know what was the root cause of these changes. Telemetry. And telemetry is really around the metrics. It's around the health of our systems and the overlay of the temperature of those systems, as it were. So we understand exactly you know, what's going on, what's the trending information um, that the system is telling us within the components of the topology. And then finally, tracing, which is critical because that focuses on the customer journey. It gives us the ability to overlay those customer journeys in the combination of those other three dimensions being which steps in the topology does the customer pass through, at what point in time, and how is the actual underlying services and infrastructure performing you know, within our cloud estates, as well as what's actually been brought in from our other sources of data like Splunk or other types of uh, monitoring APM level information we can, be, we can be collecting. Now, it's a unique approach, as I mentioned, because being able to group this data together uh, in those exact four dimensions at any point in time, it gives us the ability for our automation to be accurate in how it resolves, but more importantly, allows us to start to be able to use it as a filter to understand when things change in the system what or things go wrong, what was the originating problem? So step one is forming the topology. Now we can establish this topology from a number of different sources. One's from our general service providers and that could be our cloud providers where Stack State automatically discovers these topologies and brings them together for us. And that can be across multi-cloud as well, which is extremely important now that we see many of our customers moving into the multi-cloud environments. We need to be able to bring everything together into a common topology on. Uh, that has all of that information together, including the on-premise uh, infrastructure as well. Tracing, so we can pull that information directly uh, through Dynatrace or through Stack State uh, and those various components. Discovery, which we can pull in from other uh, different tooling like SolarWinds, uh, as well as obviously relying heavily on what Stack State delivers for us. Then also pulling in the deployment information, the continuous delivery of software where we can get that out of GitLab or Helm to be able to see exactly what's changing the environments and what's changing inside our containers as we're deploying them out across those AKS or EKS systems and services. And then obviously the CMDBs, the static information and the, and the, the system of record information and pulling all of those things together really allows us to be able to get one common view and one master topology, uh, which allows us to have complete insight into you know, what's going on from the structure of the system and link that back to the key business services that I spoke about earlier. Step two is enabling telemetry. And really telemetry comes from any source that you could imagine um, within the various monitoring, alerting and observability platforms. And be able to bring these together uh, into that form of topology then allows us to understand the state of all the components in the system. Step three, we move in and bring through tracing. Tracing gives us the ability to be able to understand the customer journey, as I spoke about earlier. But more importantly, how long in every step that that customer needs to move through each of the various services does it take to pass through each of those services and components? Combining those together with those other three elements and then adding time allows us to be able to build a complete understanding as to what is going on in the system from the customer journey point of view and mapping that back to every step that they're taking through that master topology. And then we can go back in time if we require to, to be able to examine what the system state was at that time and move uh, back to the current stage in time at any point we need to. And that's critical when it comes to our, enabling our automation because that it actually needs to go back to that point in time as well to be able to do that, an accurate root cause analysis as we as humans would normally, we want our automation to do that uh, autonomously. So let's see the results of what happens when we implement the solution that Luke just described in a live system. So this is in a 30 minute window. So first we have a well monitored system with telemetry, with traditional monitoring. So uh, 100 alerts come in and what this really results in is 100 different tickets being logged. So 100 tickets are being logged, 100 tickets that need, uh, uh, that need to be actioned on. And what's important to note is some of these tickets could actually be relate to the same event. So the same issue could cascade into a problem in the application, in the DB, in middleware, etc. So they don't get correlated and they are, you know, 100 unique set of actions that we'll have to work on. 
but with the 4T model being implemented, what this essentially means that you see here, the 100 tickets are now suppressed into 40 unique events, which are well correlated. So for, you know, if you go back to my previous example, so if, you know, if you take the banking scenario, if there is an error in processing a loan, everything really, uh, from, you know, an issue in the application, database, middleware, et cetera, get correlated, logged as a single ticket, which results in two things, less tickets to solve and more effective resolutions and automation because you have all the information related to the issue correlated and addressed together. So this is how it really looks like. As you can see here, you have one correlated ticket. This then ties to events in the application, database, etc. And you have the entire telemetry and topology analysis together with this, which is what you know each of uh, the engineers as well as our automated systems use and act upon. So what does this mean in terms of overall outcomes? Less alerts much higher success rate, both in terms of, you know, faster resolution of tickets and higher degree of automation. And to going back to the, the theme of automate to transform in a world where the applications and infrastructure is rapidly changing. What this also means is, you know, we have the ability to rapidly uh, discover and dynamically manage the topology so that when the system undergoes a change, all of this automation and correlation is still intact. And the speed at which we have been able to operationalize this with clients has significantly increased as well. And we are able to do this now in weeks rather than months. So what are the key takeaways? Kaushik mentioned to us, you know, the real focus that our enterprise clients have now on at scale, getting consistent cloud blueprints, uh, grappling with this, the, the frequent change that's occurring within cloud, but also grappling with the distributed nature you know, of the serverless type architectures, uh, as well as the different SaaS services that they're starting to bring into their enterprise. And they need to enable this automation at scale as well across these distributed entities. They need to have a focus, as I mentioned earlier, on value-led, being able to be ensuring that the North Stars of the business and the key services the business depend on are measured and understood and the dependencies that those services rely on uh, are also supported by the IT services that underpin them. They also need an ability to automate to transform so that they can enable faster transformations. They can enable the IP that gets trapped during the transformation to be held within the system and then enabling the new normal, enabling the ability for us to work like we have been in a distributed fashion enable the inclusion of collaboration uh, tools, the focus now on the experience from a customer, as well as the, the staff and employees that they, that they work with in the enterprise. And we need to also converge trends across the automation into low code solutions and engineering practices and into DevOps so they can work hand in hand to be able to deliver the key capabilities and, and structural change that's actually going on in, inside the enterprise. But this advanced change and this rapid change requires us to be able to trap, as I mentioned earlier, the intelligence of the system. And the way that we're, we're doing that is really relying upon stack state to be able to pull that together and merge these various topologies from different sources and systems of record, cloud, you know, discovered components and bring them together so that we can correlate uh, in a smart way what's actually going on inside the system, but also trap it in a slice of time so that at any point in time, we can see what changes that are occurring uh, in these dynamic systems so that our automation can go back to those points in time and understand what was the root cause of the problem. And this allows us to be able to be very particular about what we actually automate first. And Kastik showed us the diagram there of the different alternatives and in what we actually look for when different components of the systems fail in different orders and how the, the benefits of that time traveling topology helps us to be able to immediately recommend what the parent of the problem is uh, as we pass it into stack state to help us with that and this is what is driving an improved customer service delivery this is what is driving an improved business outcome for our customers and it's also enabling our ai and machine learning to be able to engage in these different dimensions of data to make better decisions uh, to, to ensure that we deliver a better service for our customers